Welcome to today's stream, everybody. We're going to hop right back into our outlaw painting, but first we're going to do our usual uh, exercises. So let us get straight into it here. We've got our canvas ready to go. Just reposition everything Cintiq wise. And so we're going to be using the virtual pose models. Um, again to start with our sketching today so let us hop straight into that we'll throw on some music here and we'll just get into it all right so we've got our model we're just gonna again kind of just to reiterate if you've been following along for a while now um, you know that we are trying to keep our poses pretty pretty basic in the beginning just kind of warming up Let's draw some feet. Welcome, welcome. I hope everybody had a good weekend. little bit in here hello welcome welcome I did have a good weekend thanks for asking pretty relaxing all right let's uh, I'm gonna zoom back out from the back view sort of back to recorder trying to get the uh, the body shape here anybody get up to anything exciting for the weekend this brush it feels kind of like a loose bristle brush and getting some really nice kind of stroke out of it I suppose we could make it a lot bigger as well kind of blunt some of the uh, some of the detail just so that we don't kind of get trapped into kind of thinking about that stuff as we are just trying to build up some energetic strokes here let's turn her around a little bit what was the name of the documentary?
there's there let's turn her around again and zoom in on her face this time so i'm 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 definitely kind of getting in here when i'm when i'm doing my just warm-ups and if i have a image of a model full body i may zoom in on just the hands or the face so that's definitely something that you can can try out in there Getting some of that speed in through here. Please draw slow. Uh, no, the point of it is to not draw slow. Uh, you need to kind of just keep shapes roughed out and, and warm up. Okay, you can get into slow, slower drawing um, when you are warm. It's not about the being precious with your artwork right now. Right, so just trying to look at sort of what what you can produce in there and, and get some of those shapes down and, and then not uh, not being sentimental at all. Um, so you gotta keep it fast and loose. So give that a shot, Andrew. Um, the documentary, uh, Trials of Gabriel Fernando, never heard of it. Not like I'm, I'm somebody that uh, watches a lot of TV but uh, or even Netflix in there um, also watch a documentary called don't F with cats <laughs> nice was it big cats or is it uh, house cats let's see if we can turn the model a little bit I'll get a front view of her face here. Keeping it quick, uh, normal. Well, actually, we'll go a little bit more gray with this. I think I'm gonna switch my um, brush to something where I'm gonna get a little bit more of a multiply going on. <clears throat> Oh yeah, it's a dark one. What's the uh, what's the summation of of the story in that, or or the the tale, I guess, that they weave. Domestic cats, but I don't think you like it. Though my mom found it uh, really upsetting. Oh, okay. <clears throat> Luca Magnata. Oh, okay. He was. Uh, he sent uh, some. I think something like body parts to one of the schools here in Vancouver. If that's the same guy. Um, and then they 
I think they tracked him down in Europe. If that's the same dude. Pretty crazy though. That story. Yep, that's the guy. I remember that. It's just like I, I know where the school is too, where they sent it. It's just such a random spot to to single out, I guess. Um, crazy though. Slow down a little bit for some of this. blonde hair so I'm just gonna kind of block out some some darker masses for her. something nice about keeping that loose like that so let's, let's zoom out let's go back let's switch it up a little crazy with the, the model here <clears throat> Am I familiar with the artist Mike Frankina? Frankina. Uh, you, you know me, Blake. I'm terrible with names. I'd probably recognize the artwork, but uh, the name doesn't uh, ring a bell. But that's not saying much for me. Um, what, uh, what does he do? Definitely digging this brush today. My line of action session has photos of toddlers in it. They're too deep. Uh, that's that's still good though. I mean, just drawing. I mean, the, the structures of the body at that point are so much different than an adult's body. It's really good to practice. I mean, I don't know. I, I suppose you could find yourself in some sort of project where you're working on a lot of sort of infants. I mean, I think there was even like infant style creatures in like doom three or something like that so i mean it would be beneficial if you had to draw a lot of them or it was part of the story for whatever reason uh they don't have to be demon babies <laughs> um uh he does a lot of horror themed artwork especially with a lot of rotten torn flesh uh, I'm trying to emulate the rotten flesh but he used in one of his pieces I'm struggling uh, a bit to feel like I'm managing the same look I'll have to check him out I'm not quite sure I'd have to have to see his stuff but maybe I haven't seen him um, Cuphead Cuphead's awesome that sort of uh, you know early early animation uh, aesthetic looks amazing I love it it's a really hard game though 
uh, maybe we'll uh, design something like that after we're done with the uh, alien containment unit. We'll maybe pop in and do something inspired by Cuphead. Uh, curious, does your tablet uh, or art display that you use have tilt sensitivity? And do you think it's something useful and necessary to have if you want to become a concept artist? Um, tilt sensitivity, uh, yes, it does. Um, I think some of the first Cintiqs had had tilt. Uh, you can turn the tilt on at least. Um, I don't ever use it, to be honest. I don't pay attention to tilt, never have. Some people do. I mean, that's one of the things about um, being a concept artist is when you, especially when you meet other concept artists and you learn about their sort of method, everybody's different. There's, I mean, there are certain things you have to do with like, for instance, using layers in, in a lot of uh, commercial artwork. It's good because you can fix things or go back or leave things on separate layers so that you can tweak things, right? So there are these kinds of, you know, common workflows, but some people are just completely different than others. So if you find that, you know, for you to get the look that you want to use something like uh, Tilt, then yeah. I mean, you can get the art pen, which will work with uh, roll as well. Um, maybe I'm getting those mixed up, but even then it's just not something that I use, but maybe it's good for your workflow. <sighs> Demon baby is not my choice. Babies are creepy to me. <laughs> oh, come on. There's, I mean, there are creepy babies. They're the, the ones that look like, you know, little like dark circles under their eyes and like scary. And then there's the ones that look like old used car salesman uh and then there's the cute babies right um i suggested that idea to you on linkedin oh okay yeah missed that uh good look at you very prophetic uh it is a hard game yeah it's very hard uh all right let's let's get to some drawing here so we've got our model that's sort of like arching is back in here so we can kind of Shoulders in there, the back muscles, the rib cage. Sometimes I even prefer just the loose line drawings of um, figure drawing, just because it's just so like energetic, almost interpretive, right? It's getting that energy in there. Some really nice kind of arch to his back this way. Um, I always love the brushes you sketch with. Uh, what makes uh, a brush good for loose line drawings of these? Like these, sorry, I can't talk today. Well, this one specifically, you can see that it has a lot of, uh, it's got a lot of texture assigned to it as I sweep through. You can see that it's moving through there and texturizing. But you can also see by the tip shape, if we, if we try and like just plant a little bit, you see that it's, depending on the direction that I I start with right it will will draw in that direction but you are seeing the bristles come out 
Now, I mean, to get that look, you can see in my brush tip shape, if I make it really big, hopefully you can see the cursor there, that it's just the breaks in between those blobs that will actually produce that, that look like the bristles or captured bristle being pressed open on the canvas, right? Or the, the paper, whatever. Um, so, you know, if, if you don't have any spaces in between uh, your tip shape elements, then it's just gonna be a blob, like a hard round brush, right? Which still works really well for, for uh, sketching. But something like this just feels a little bit more, uh, let's say, um, impressionistic, right? It doesn't allow me to, and I've got this set up to a multiply. So that's, you know, when I, I brush lightly and then brush again, it starts to compound the black in there. So it can almost be like a graphite pencil at that point. But uh, yeah, it's, it's, it can be anything, right? Like you can really draw. As mentioned last time, I think you guys might remember the, the whole India ink with a, um, just a tree branch. You break and dip it into your ink well and then draw with it. You run out of ink pretty fast, right? So you have to kind of be quick with the stroke if you want to make a, a longer line. And then too much of the ink and it starts to leak down the page. And so there's this sort of media immediacy. Um, that's super fun. It'll stain your clothes. <laughs> It'll stain the floor. Don't do this in, in, in your apartment or your house. It's uh, messy. Um, but if you can in a studio space somewhere, you know, it's always fun to do, but you know, we can kind of create the summation of that almost, uh, in, um, in Photoshop sometimes, uh, Jack the Ripper. Uh, what do you think is more important a design that's realistic and makes sense or design that's more visually interesting? Uh, yeah, I talk about this um, in the course uh, at different points, uh, depending on what I'm seeing. I mean, you, you guys will see in, in certain games where the aesthetic just um, is, is more, uh, more interesting to the, the art director than it is necessarily the function. I mean, it should always look... Like, I mean, we talk about armor in uh, World of Warcraft, for instance, because everything is sort of exaggerated in that world. The more we exaggerate stuff, the, the more we're leaving behind reality, right? Um, or we turn into this sort of stylization, we simplify things and leave behind the reality as well. We're kind of making an impression of that. And so when you see those characters wandering through with these, say, massive pauldrons, right? You know, in their neutral poses, it, it looks pretty good, or their running poses, it looks pretty good. If you, you start doing emotes like waving, what you'll see is like the pauldron will clip into their head, and you'll see kind of the polygons crash through each other. I mean, that's not ideal, and it certainly wouldn't work on a real person, because the pauldron, as you lift your, your, your arm, is going to crash into your head and stop your... I mean, it's going to push your head and all of that. So you just have to establish with your client when the function needs to uh, inform uh, the, the aesthetics, right? Sometimes though, it just doesn't matter. But a lot of the way we can come to decisions with um, concept art is through thinking about the functions. Otherwise, you know, a lot of the times it, it'll be just made up, which is fine sometimes if it feels inspired, but sometimes you're just doing things to do things and why not make it link up to the function, right? And, and have some sort of visible um, functionality, yeah. Pet peeve, just like spikes on the shoulders, yeah. I mean, same thing as uh, bracers, right? You'll see like punk rockers and stuff have the spikes and sometimes, you know, in, in artwork, nothing's stopping us, so those spikes get really long. You, you, you point at something and then you drop your arm, you just stab yourself. All right. Um, another one that I see a lot of is when we're doing prop design, say weapon design, people are drawing swords and, and guns and that kind of thing. And they don't think of somebody being able to hold, right, in their hand, a handle or a grip of a gun, right? And then you get this sort of just random representation of, you know, what that could be instead of thinking about, well, 
to close your hand around something so you get a good grip, there's not a ton of room there, right? And so the volume itself can't be huge. And we'll look at that when we get into drawing our outlaw um, in a sec. But yeah, it's, it's, it's a pet peeve of mine just because it, it is very difficult to make things look good and read as functional. And I think a lot of the times people just ditch the functional part because it's just too hard. But then again, sometimes unnecessary. So it's a hard question to ask sometimes because it just depends on client, it depends on project. But it is still uh, a good a good question. The um, charm <laughs> stab the face. Yeah, uh, gun sword, yay or nay. I love the idea, the look of it is amazing. It just depends. Like I think, uh, what's his name from Final Fantasy VIII had a gun sword, sort of like a revolver that he could also just hack with, right? Just one-handed. Um, Two-handed could work, but like, where am I putting my other hand on that gun sword? Maybe there's a grip within the blade, and then I'm gonna be clear of cutting myself from that, and then I can fire. I just have to be aware of the blade that runs the length of the, say, the, the barrel, right? Um, so yeah, it's I like it. I like it in terms of a fantasy-based thing. I mean, look at the length of a bayonet on, say, guns, both modern and kind of all the way back to World War One. Those bayonets got pretty long, so you could just imagine that there's more blade running down the length of the gun and just make room for the hands, and that could be good to go. Right. That's where, I mean, sort of uh, uh, Marcus Phoenix from Gears of War. He has the gun with the chainsaw underneath, right? So he can, can kind of like hold it and chainsaw without having his hand there. But you forget and the chainsaw's on, cut your hand off. But of course, they're, they're way more present than that, right? So whatever, yeah. Um, Yeah, a lot of people do make that mistake. Uh, I've been playing Bloodborne lately, and a lot of weapons in that game are super impractical. Uh, yeah. Leon? Right. I think it was Leon. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just, that's just it, though. If it looks cool, especially, like, it, it's hilarious if you have somebody of a small sort of muscularity or small size, and then they're just using their forearm strength to move this sword that probably weighs 500 pounds because it's massive, right? And it's just sort of like wrist strength of kind of moving it around and pointing it and that kind of, although almost like it's a fencing foil, right? Uh, at that point, I mean, if you're looking at a game like Bloodborne, not a lot of reality going on there, right? It's like demons and everything looks sort of stylized and stretched and gothic and hardcore and it's like, you start to leave behind the the reality of it there so it's uh yeah it, it's it's definitely something that um you know it just depends it just always depends on uh what your client is after right because it can uh it can really just if we're being pedantic about things it can really just slow down the designs of things so i know when to stow it say working on a project i might even communicate with my client to see it's like All right, okay this stuff doesn't make sense but are you okay with that and if, if they are you know i'm okay with it they're the ones with the with the money right they're paying us so that's fine <clears throat> get this hand in here This guy's head is kind of planted on his head. <clears throat> it's a pretty cool pose. Just barely see those other fingers sticking out of the other side of his head. 
He's definitely doing some crazy bridges here. angle uh destroy all humans yeah there's uh what was the other remake that's coming out that i was really surprised at destroy all humans for sure like that that looked that looked pretty fun can't remember now what that remake was somebody mentioned in chat what the remakes are coming out I, f I i recall somebody saying there's a remake and then i was like yeah whatever it's just going to be kind of like up res but i remember looking oh mafia mafia the remake of mafia looks amazing like they really went back and remade it almost don't even remember playing it but um that looks really good Beaters in. Crash 4. No, we already talked about this. It's like I don't dig the the gameplay in Crash. It looks cool, but no, I don't have don't have tons of time for video games anyway. So I just have to be a bit more uh, selective, um, unfortunately. But tell me how it goes. Uh, it reminds me, I drew a character design uh, for a very very weird character for a short comic once. His name is Joe Shotsaw and had shotguns for legs, chainsaws for hands, nice. It's a military experiment, but wanted to be a pianist or a step dance, uh, step dancer, but always destroyed the piano or the floor while dancing. It was meant to be a bizarro comedy drama. That sounds funny. <clears throat> it would be interesting to see what other shenanigans he gets into, where he just has a pile of like, sawn in half pianos and and beat up dance floors or maybe he dances on um <clears throat> metal or rock or something um that's that's funny though took a while to type out now we're on a different topic <laughs> whatever we can go back i don't mind we're chilling on a monday right or if you're in other parts of the world a tuesday a little bit tense there we go sometimes with uh, life drawing it's fun to just kind of make almost abstract art out of it not abstract total but just using some of the lines and just following them through and not being beholden to reality necessarily and just you know playing with with the shaves maybe kind of indicating some contours on the legs that might be fun we can use our to white and then just paint on top of it oh I'm on multiply that's fine kind of carve out some of these shapes Some fun, you know. I'm all about whatever, whatever you can do to get it going, right? In terms of art, because um, I find myself if I don't just start doing it, I can sometimes get trapped in this 
cycle of kind of like, oh, what am I gonna do? And you know, everything's precious. So don't do that. Just get in there and have fun. And, and don't think that this is gonna be anything, you know, super special. <clears throat> you know, for instance, just kind of looking at this, it's almost like flames coming off the foot. So I could, I could have a flaming foot, why not? All right. Maybe we'll switch back to some. Use this really cool brush to get some, some fun flame shapes coming off. Athlete's foot, that's what he's got. It's on fire. cracks on the floor I don't know random stuff why not uh... The nightmares didn't see it. Uh, you, you said you like to paint abstract art. What do you like to use as topics? Um, well, the nice thing about abstract art, can, it can be really anything, right? Because it's, it's sort of about kind of getting shapes down on the page, maybe some sense of, a, uh, you know, atmosphere. You know, you could be drawing, uh, we've got flaming foot, like a house fire, right? And you could start to kind of maybe pull some really square shapes out of something that's very contrasty, like flames or warm like flames, but not having to actually be flames. You kind of use some of the shapes that you see and interpret them. You put them down and, and then you just kind of go with them. Like, what? where do I want this to go? I don't need it to be, excuse me, a house fire. I just kind of use that to get going. Right. Um, you can be a little bit more interpretive though with it, and maybe you are painting a house fire. A house, you know, you saw a house fire when you were a kid, and you're kind of just remembering some of the shapes and and trying to be expressive about that, right? Um, and make an impression on somebody that there's this heaviness or this heat or this these this sharpness of shape, right? This destruction, um, and then you just abstract it, right? <clears throat> That's what I do love about fine arts over commercial art. This is, it's a lot more about kind of your personal expression uh, rather than the client's expression. Um, so, food for thought. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, okay, I know when I finish rendering. How do I know when I finish rendering? Is it when I feel I'm not able to add anything to a texture of the object or character I'm rendering because right now I mostly just stop after a certain point not because I'm happy with the result just because I don't know how to proceed after a certain point um <coughs> excuse me coffee I'm drinking is trash in my throat um yeah it's tough I mean knowing when you're finished you can definitely move past uh, a point in a piece where you know th this is where you have your expression carried at its fullest right and move into kind of noodling detail forever 
right? And eventually sometimes that noodling of detail just starts to make everything really rigid. You lose energy in a piece if it's, you know, you have any painterly strokes. Sometimes clients really want that. They want it to look like a render from an in-game engine, right? So everything will be rigid uh, or, or very precise. Um, so if I knew that that was the case for a client in that regard, I would make sure that everything reaches that point. I think about, you know, if I showed somebody this, would they think it's more of like a screenshot? Would that be their reaction or does it look like a painting still? Um, and if it's supposed to be painterly, am I starting to get into too much hard rendering where I lose the painterly qualities of it, right? Um, it's, it's not easy to detect. But if you have no plan, it's even worse, right? Like you don't know what kind of aesthetic you're aiming for in terms of the finished finished quality. Because I can say for this foot that I'm drawing, it, it could be that I'm after a loose sort of rough painting where everything still feels energetic and, and fast. And then I could go in and start rendering the toenail in like painstaking detail and I lose that immediately, right? Or it, it becomes something else, but it's not what I wanted, right? So I would say, you know, have a plan for what it is you're after and uh, and try and land on that. It's not to say, and, and, and you mentioned that, uh, you know, I'm not happy with it. I, I don't know if I'm happy with most of the artwork I make. It's like I always think about things I could have done better or maybe it doesn't feel exactly like the image or vision I had in my head, right? And But I have to finish it, get on with it, right? Um, and then maybe the next time you focus in on something, right? You can always take stock of what happened in your piece and then say, next time I'm going to try harder here or here. <clears throat> uh, Parasite, no, haven't seen it, heard good things. Um, Never play the game Bart's Nightmare on Super Nintendo. Uh, no. Bart's Nightmare. Bart's Nightmare. I have not. It sounds interesting, though. Oh, maybe I have. The, the cover looks familiar. Yeah. Bart versus the Space Mutants is the first... Simpsons game I played. I love that game. Uh, but uh, yeah, I recall that. I recall playing that a while ago, though. Wow. <clears throat> um, okay, so we've got our flaming foot here. We've got a few, a few other kind of drawings of our of our character. Um, feeling pretty good for a warm up, right? I wasn't targeting any number of, of pieces, but. Uh, you know that's just a good way of kind of working into our um our piece so let's go back to the outlaw here it's our lady and <clears throat> we uh we're going to continue with the uh, sort of more of the fine point drawing right now a um, couple things i wanted to change though in here was her arm her arms i, I was modeling her arm similar to the way we have our model here whoops the way her arm's kind of moving back in space, if that were a cylinder, right, to, to kind of plant on the exercise ball behind her. But we've kind of got a horse saddle in the way, and, and so I was moving that arm in that direction, and then I moved this forward here. Um, and I, I'm just not happy with it. So I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna erase that. I'm going to just rough the masses back in. Uh, at this kind of drawing, uh, do you value the structure or is it more important the external forms? Um, at this kind of drawing, I'm assuming you're talking about this one. Um, do you value the structure, the anatomy, or the external form? So, so the way we would talk about this, so if we're talking about form, we are talking about three-dimensional volume, right? If we're talking about shape, it's the exterior shape of her, the two-dimensional 
aspect of her. Um, and at this stage in the drawing, I'm thinking about the volumes, but I'm also witnessing the shapes that as I move those volumes around in space, the shape overall shapes or shape that it makes, right? Um, and and so I'm, I'm kind of thinking of both things at this point. Um, but you do want to get the volumes looking right because that's going to tell you where contours happen, where lighting falls, where shadow is cast, all of those things, right? And then I can imagine at this point into the future, my light uh, setup, what that might look like. Um, and I can make adjustments now to help those things out in the future, right? So, um, which is a little bit more difficult for juniors, right? Because you're not you're probably struggling with the minute to minute instead of like projecting into the future of what your lighting might look like, what your color may look like. Right. Um, so, but you do have to get that minute to minute stuff correct, but you can run into future problems. It's like, well, the way I position that arm, it's in shadow and it doesn't read very well because my light source is here or there or there. Right. Um, so I, I'm, I'm definitely thinking of both though. So I am going to have her arm move backwards still, but I'm going to have her uh, resting her hand on a, on a gun, a holster of sorts. So it's good to look at reference in there. feel like we're gonna have a holster in here and then have the gun grip sort of coming off the backside like so so I'm just gonna kind of mask that I mean we could have her hand kind of drop down in here but <coughs> I don't know. I'm not super fond of that. My eraser is super annoying. What's going on here? There we go. Piece is pretty big, so it would seem that my computer's struggling a bit. So I kind of want her hand to be almost like gripped over top of uh, uh, of the gun in the holster. So the holster can kind of be sitting down here and she's maybe just gripping it. Get rid of some of these lines in here so we can see what we're doing. And at this point I am gonna drop her down in opacity so that we can get back to seeing our line work in there. We can make rhyme or reason. So I'll sketch like this quite a bit where I'm, I'm kind of, I'll go through iterations where I kind of rough things out, clean them up a little bit, drop that layer, clean things up a little bit, continue to build on it. So let's actually move my reference out of the way a little bit there. Play sheep, dog and wolf? No, I haven't. Who's your favorite superhero and why is it not Spider-Man? <laughs> uh, no, it's not Spider-Man. Uh, I, I guess I was more into Spider-Man when I was younger, but even then I liked Venom more. Um, and he's not a superhero, I know. He's sort of sort of like a split between anti-hero and, and villain. But uh, I've always, if I had to pick a superhero, that's a tough one. It's 100% not Superman. Superman, and I'd probably get burned at the stake for this, but Superman just seems like a lazy design to me. 
he can do everything, right? And the only thing that can kill him is a rock, <laughs> space rock. Um, whatever he needs to do, he can do. He can fly, he's got laser eyes, he can chill things out. I mean, I guess that means he's a Superman, but it just seems like, well, you know, what's stopping him, right? Oh, a rock. Uh, <laughs> I've always loved, I loved Wolverine back in the day. He's kind of become, ah, uh, they, they've done all right in the MCU. Um, but, uh, I really liked Wolverine, uh, a lot. Um, Ghost Rider, I really liked. Um, who else? Ghost Rider was a big one. Um, the Punisher was was my one of my favorites. So it's sort of like Wolverine, Ghost Rider, The Punisher. Those are my faves. Um, yeah, <laughs> Spider Man though. I mean, Spider the Into the Spider Verse was an amazing flick um, made locally here in Vancouver as well. They did a phenomenal job on that film. I wish the new video game was in the style of that film. Um, I the the new newer video game, um, the one where you could you know be Spider Man throughout the city. That was awesome. I just I bought that game purely to be able to swing through the buildings as Spider Man. But I mean, I'd say my I love the old 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 Spider Man cartoon with the sort of like um, watercolor skies where he just kept. It was always that canned shot where he's swinging, always right. No matter where he went, it was always that shot. Anyway. Um, Green Inferno, nope. Uh, Jumping spiders are cool, yeah, one of my favorite spiders. 100% agree about Superman, yeah, yeah. Um, I am an anti hero guy. I just, I don't know what it is about the sort of. I, I find it a little bit maybe hard to believe this sort of unflawed or flawless character that doesn't have you know um you know some sort of darkness to them i think everybody has their own sort of skeleton or darkness about them and i think that's what makes people interesting not that they're evil but just that they're not they're flawed right and superman just didn't seem to be that the sort of like the the cartoon chad <laughs> right so to speak but uh yeah anti-heroes definitely more my vibe um yeah yeah heath ledger's joker was iconic man i don't think anybody well i haven't seen the new film but joaquin phoenix is a monster in terms of acting um and he won an oscar for it i think I remember correctly let's get that finger out here and get this bandolier running across her belt Massive buckle. So what is your opinion on Venom? Uh, 
I for me, it's always been about his design. I thought it was just cool and like I kind of got out of it once Carnage and the rest of them started getting into it. My house got broken into, all my com comics got stolen, which is weird because they weren't really worth anything, but uh, I kind of never really went back into it. Um, <clears throat> but I, yeah, I, I just thought Venom looked really cool. Uh, I'm gonna drop this shoulder down a little bit. And then we've got the put some buckles, sir. Almost like a pea coat. We'll get some buttons coming off of that. I think it's going to be kind of torn at the top. That'll look pretty cool, I think. I feel like she needs a bandana on her head. can kind of flow out from underneath that. What can I reference here? So make sure that you gather reference. I'm not going to show my reference just because it's different guidelines and different streaming platforms. So we'll stay out of that, but obviously gather reference so you're not just winging this terms of cowboy hats and whatnot right um, definitely what I'm doing uh, as a spider-man villain and sometimes anti-hero um, I agree I love this design especially when they make him look slimy and organic yeah it's it's sort of the symbiote um, when it it does its thing it's just it breaks the form so much and it kind of distorts its face which is really cool I mean, Spider-Man was fixed, so you couldn't get all of that fun distortion out of the character. Um, unless he, the symbiote, was connected to him. Um, I had a comic, I think one of the first comics, maybe 1980, where uh, that was a thing. So, I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, Carnage was really cool. Very stringy looking, whereas uh, Venom felt like massive and muscular, right? And so that's sort of like the Hulk vibe, which I was never really into the Hulk. Gray Hulk kind of looked a little bit cooler because like old school Gray Hulk when he was more square. And then they kind of just made him this hypertrophic bodybuilder dude, um, whatever. Uh, who else? I really like Gambit. I like Rogue from the X-Men. Um, I didn't like Jubilee. Um, cause she'd always hang out with Wolverine and I don't know. I just didn't get it. Um, Cyclops is whether Colossus was pretty cool. Um, who else in that crew? Nightcrawler was pretty cool. I liked the, the whole design of Nightcrawler. Definitely fun. Uh, let's try and find some. Some tassels coming off the pants in there. She's gonna have 
gloves for sure. I'm trying to get the foreshortening on her arm working a little bit better. I might kind of still shrink that shoulder on that side. Um, Now I just need to get the uh, the riding grip. I don't even know what this is, what it's called, but the handle on the <laughs> on the saddle, which you'll have sort of folded blanket kind of up on top make that a little bit bigger I want this to be a little bit rough right now I feel like I'm getting a bit trapped in the getting a bit trapped in the uh, details too too quickly Give her slight muscularity, something that's believable. A la Linda Hamilton from Terminator. Terminator 2. kind of this gambler hat on. I didn't want it to be sort of a traditional Stetson or anything. I wanted that to be a bit bigger. Let's uh, zoom out a bit. This will be really short on this side. We'll make it really square up top. Well, very tubular up top anyway. That feels pretty good. <clears throat> uh, yeah, Grey Hulk. Um, Grey Hulk was actually the original Hulk. I just read this recently. And because of the printing press problems, he kept coming out as green. Um, and so they just went with Green Hulk. Um, but he was originally gray. I didn't know that either. Um, but yeah, he was supposed to be gray. Oh, there we go. Originally gray. I made him green. But yeah, it's the printing press was the problem. Red Hulk, yeah. <laughs> some timeline BS. Uh, have I ever been to America? Uh, yes, I live fairly close to the States, so I've been there a few, quite a few times, different spots. Um, I watch Rick and Morty. I don't really watch television, to be honest, including Netflix. I just, uh, I'm not somebody that likes to sit and watch stuff. So, uh, but I have watched Rick and Morty, not the new season. Um, I'm, I'm meaning to get to it. So there are shows that I'll watch, but, um, haven't got to that yet. Um, have you been to America, Jack?
Okay, we'll get the back of the old... The back of the saddle looking. Looking good. Maybe have like a saddlebag pretty high up here. And then we're going to have our gun holster on the horse at the back. Got her gun ready to rock and roll on the side there. I was going to have there be a little machete in here, but I don't think that that's going to be you know, necessary at this point. Might just be too much. Uh, get that kneecap, that patella coming back in there as it moves up into crotch area. Sort of get the hip flexor, that kind of thing. So thinking about the kind of rib cage up in here as well on any sort of the abductors, of course the belly button, right? Those hips. Um, I'm really kind of massing some of the lines in here because I, I, I am going to go back and kind of clean some of that up. So some of those lines that I'm making are not accurate to what I'm going to keep. <clears throat> and definitely not going to be something that I'm showing client uh, because it's just still too rough, right? So um, food for thought. Uh, let's go and look here. Been to Canada a few times in Europe, but not the USA or the in California. California's nice. Uh, National Parks. I'm scared of the book series I've been reading about the topic, though. As a concept artist, uh, can you choose to only work as a creature designer, or do you have to be happy if you get to draw anything at all? Uh, you can choose to be whatever you want. It's whether or not somebody will actually employ you as that, right? Especially as a junior. Um, you don't get as much uh, freedom as you'd maybe hope um, because you are new and, you know, more of a liability to the client because of the lack of experience, right? And maybe technical know-how. So um, sometimes you just, you know, you're not going to get that, the, the work that maybe you want, but uh, you can always aim to be a character designer. It's just, uh, I mean, you do limit if say, if you only put forward a character portfolio and you'll hear people from like Blizzard and, and bigger AAA studios talk about specializing in what you want to make. Certainly that can happen, but imagine if you're being pragmatic, if there are people that are slightly better than you that have more practice and somebody's willing to employ a junior that has more of a broad range of skills for say like an indie game. So you may be able to go into that, get some experience on the side, focus on building up your character portfolio. And then when you are better and more practice and you have experience, you can submit uh, a more specialized folio for that, right? So I think a lot of the times when people give um, advice on this, they leave out that element. Say if you wanted to be a character designer, um, are you going to be looking to hire a junior character designer, right? Your, your stuff has to be pretty amazing for that to just come straight out. Um, so it's, it's hard to say. Different art directors, different hiring managers are going to look for different things, but specialization does limit the amount of, uh, of jobs you get access to. Um, and, you know, smaller companies can't afford specialist artists, so they'll look for somebody more general, right? So you can, they, they both exist. It's just like, how do you get there is the question. <clears throat> National parks in America, uh, probably. Not I've not never been to Yellowstone or um, um, Yosemite, um, but I've been to some in Oregon and uh, Washington. Where else? A little bit of the just 
top of Montana by Waterton in Canada, where the Rockies are severe. Um, and I guess, I guess in Hawaii, I've been to the uh, volcano. I think that's a national park in Maui. And where else? Yeah, I think that would be it for like well-known national parks. Yeah. Very nice. Okay, let's get some horse bottom in here. Let's see where we're what we're dealing with. I want to get those horse glutes. Add a more general shape back there for now. Get it, and we we'll get some break up up the main. And then we we'll get the stirrup. Tucking her leg around the stirrup and getting that foot in there. Just falling off of uh, where we could see it. That's fine. Just kind of blankets up in there. A little saddlebag action. That side will get maybe some of the blankets just ending at the end over there. And uh, that feels pretty good to me. We will be a little bit more precious about the face just because we want some of those more distinct details to, to come through. So I'm going to make my brush really small now. <clears throat> Live to tell the tale. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, if, any, if you're thinking about, you know, parks being dangerous because of North American wildlife, Canada, I, I was born in in uh, the Rocky Mountains so sort of like spent my life uh, in and amongst them and definitely the grizzlies and cougars and bears and stuff are, are there so the American National Parks aren't that aren't that different to me in that regard at least the you know the North American continental parks right something like maybe an ocean park in Hawaii with great whites or whatever sharks you might find it'd be a danger I have not, uh, well, I've been in, but I haven't uh, luckily run across them. But, yeah, yeah, let's go find a better picture of uh, side eye on the woman. friend here sort of like encompassing that whole eye in there I'm 
that nostrils getting a little bit of a little bit squirrely on us. Got a little cigarello holder. That so feels pretty good. We'll maybe just chop some of this in here. I don't care for it to be too distinct. And we wanted to give her a little bit of kind of like pectoral definition. <clears throat> so we can see, we can just take this one down by a hint. And we got more of our finished drawing in there. Um, can clean it up even more at this point. Just see if I'm missing anything if I turn that off. So all those layers exist underneath anyway, so if you feel like, ah, oh, well, I thought I had drawn something here, I could go back and kind of pop some of those open. Yeah. 411, nope, haven't read it. Uh, well, let me, uh, excuse me, the other thing that does, which you see a lot in the stars. And... Yeah, if you, if you get out of town, you can see uh, beautiful, you know, the Milky Way just kind of staring out from the darkness. Uh, you just have to get out of the city lights. So if you're in a really kind of overpopulated place, then it's just, Va Vancouver is actually pretty hard to see it, but uh, you don't have to drive that far actually. Well, I guess maybe in European terms, it's, it's far, but uh, <clears throat> like an hour out of town and you can, uh, You can see things pretty well. All right, let's let's kind of knock this down a little bit more. Let's get those uh, arms going. New layer. So I am going to maybe switch my brush to a hard round pressure. So I can just define those lines without the sketchiness necessarily.
got a really long neck. any of Stephen Hawking's book. No, I haven't. I have Brian Greene's uh, string theory book, which I started getting into, just got sidetracked from it. Um, plenty of books that I'd uh, read. Hawking's would be definitely a good one. Um, I don't make a ton of time for reading, which I maybe should for sure, but I've got lots of other things going on right now. So just priorities, right? It would be really nice though to just have that other 12 hours in a day. start getting into the fine detail on her now. some of those folds going on if you don't if you're not aware of kind of how the folds will work in your piece then what other advice can I offer then make sure you look at reference right um, nothing better than that to get your piece looking the way you need it to Cougar attack scar. Hammering me the questions. No, I don't read those books. Uh, uh, what do we got? Watch ice hockey. Why is the game between Canada and America so personal? Do you not like each other? No, it's. I'm pretty sure that's just competition. Canadians and Americans get along quite fine. buttons on, on, on the uh, on that side there I almost wonder if instead of I'll just incorporate sort of the button here with like that there 
and then we'll have this other button kind of wrap around to the other side there Too bad. Top of that hat, maybe she's got kind of. Uh, wrap or scarf kind of runs up tucks in the feather there might have a little bite taken out of that Pretty good. Get this forearm kind of moving back. What software do I use to uh, draw? This is Photoshop, yeah. So Photoshop is pretty, you know, pretty common mainstay in the industry of digital drawing, although there are other options to be sure. Um, but Photoshop uh, tends to be the ones, it's the one if you were to go through the school, you'd be working with Photoshop. I believe you can demo it if you've never tried it before, so invite you to do that um the stereotype that some europeans is that america and canada don't like one another uh that's not true i mean every country has their issues with every other country but they're like our big 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 brother to the south we're like their little little brother to the north there's 10 times the amount of people there than there is in Canada so 300 and some million now we've got 37 million so there's a lot of a lot of opinions but I enjoy America Americans enjoy it all be like the French not liking the the Brits right some people will have problems with some people and some people won't so depends on who you ask I guess uh, <laughs> there you go he hates me because I'm Canadian. There you go. Never been to Scotland. Um, never. Nope. My wife has. She lived in Edinburgh for a while. All right. Let's try and get the... Uh... Hmm. 
belt going on here. Thinking about our belt loops. Super exciting belt loop design. All right, but we get to start to see here kind of come out of this, right, which is nice. It's all just kind of making sure that we make time for that stuff to actually happen. And so as we're, we're drawing on chill Mondays, right, we can slowly have that stuff come to fruition. What colors? Um, lots of earthy, warm colors. Black, red. She's an outlaw. I want to make her feel like an outlaw. So kind of using some of the typical colors that we would look at in our character design weeks with the villain. Um, but we'll see. I don't know if I want her to be full villain. Maybe we'll go for something that is more a little bit like uh, the old anti-hero. pinky out? Nah, she'll be clutching it. Get a buckle coming out so we can see that that holster is connected to something. So kind of thinking about the uh, function there, right? The holster will come down here. And we'll have a little bit of a connection point. We'll have a little... seam running down that side we had our saddlebags coming from here we could still do that just looking for those premium overlaps so we make sure that uh, these things work really well as they come down this section for the saddlebag and then we're, maybe there's something in there I don't know what that is and then we can have the, uh, I guess the riding blanket would be nice there, All right? Maybe there's multiple kind of overlaps of the riding blanket on the back. Get the rump of the horse. quad into the patella kind of imagining that patella in there as it connects to the uh, tibia Little ligaments on the outside of the leg we could get that seam running down here if we wanted to kind of start that up just get some folds in the knee Oh, 
bottom side of this holster slash bandolier going on. Kind of think of the leather kind of folding over itself um, with this. That's where the seam would go for the base of that leather element. And then we could get a riding blanket coming out of here. See if we can kind of connect the dots in through there, just kind of draw the line straight through. I can see where it might need to go. Gonna have the saddle run up that way. And then a riding blanket sticking up underneath, right? So I might kind of get that even almost like catching the rifle uh, holster and, and creating a fold where it's caught up on it as the horse is trotting around. I have our other blanket down below that. Even a kind of simple though, right? We want to. I want to be able to see everything. Underground city. I can't remember. Um, city Supergirl graveyard. Oh, cool. That's cool. Old graveyards, eh? elbow of the horse kind of coming up in there. Some of attack just attaches to the horse in there, kind of binds up over the top, and then we can get some hair being tossed around, and then uh, get that uh, bridle kind of swing up into the horse's mouth there. Gonna rough in some of that horse tack on the jaw. It's disappearing around the side, so I don't want to kind of focus on too much of that because we're kind of we want to focus on our character. But uh, oops. there we go.
Some of those horse hairs going on. Some of the muscles. Probably need a little bit more of a barrel on that chest to kind of come down this way. Kind of cut it a little bit short there. Maybe not that deep. Something like that. Get that overlap there, that overlap there. And then we'll get that other leg. <clears throat> Spearing on that side. Some of these flyaway hairs not being exactly on the target. The rest of them. There we go. Get some messy artwork in the arm region, but we can tweak that and get back in there and fix it. So just looking for those little hits of overlap. Plenty in there that we can kind of get in and tweak, but at least we get like a nice range. I'm using some of the seams to create uh, contour in these spots. Turn this back on real quick, get the edge of the saddle. Not looking too bad. on her gun she's riding ready to mess some people up if she needs to I kind of smooth that part of her leg out so I, I just want to get in there as well on this kind of big mass of her leg maybe it stains or she's fixed her pants where it's she's been shot at or her pants have kind of torn from wear and tear riding, right? Um, but there we go. <clears throat> it's kind of like a where we were, just really rough. We're basing it on that ball and then we get to something like this. Um, so yeah, it was a couple hours kind of chilling, answering questions. So, I mean, normally we'd go a little bit faster if, uh, we didn't have that aspect to it, but you can see sort of just getting in there and, and making those things, um, a little bit more clear, right. That can, uh, really, really get you to where you need to be in, in terms of kind of a more final render. Uh, from here, I would get into some grayscale rendering, some lighting. I probably bring some light in just over in front of her. I might cast some shadow on her face, right? So we get kind of that moody expression of her looking out of the shadow. Um, and so I'd know the rest of it's going to be lit that way. And then, you know, if the sun is that high in the sky, what colors is it going to produce in the sky? Probably still pretty, you know, blue day. Um, so bright light. Um, it depends where you want to put that sun. But uh, we can get to that next time. We'll uh, spend one more session on this. Um, and uh, still tentative that uh, we'll be here next week. I'm on vacation. Um, so uh, we'll look for a substitute. If we can't, then we'll just carry on the following week. Um, but uh, uh, like I said, you try this stuff out. Keep, you know, stay with me in these... Uh, on these drawings and draw your own and, and kind of, you know, you can even ask the questions in the, in the chat. So, uh, 
Ah, thanks, Gustavo. Um, yeah, so our, our story is kind of coming together on her here, and uh, so I, I'm probably going to do a little, uh, I, well, maybe we'll do a little bit of a background. It seems like we might need one of those, but I might do that on my own uh, for next time. Uh, anyway, so uh, this is where she's at, our outlaw, for this week's stream. So thanks, everybody, for dropping by on the uh, chill Monday uh, life drawing. Uh, make sure you practice, keep it loose, warm up, make something fun, okay? Otherwise, uh, take care, everybody. Thank you for showing up, and we will see everybody next time. See ya.